okay so i haven't done one of these guides in quite a while so for the for those of you guys who are new to my channel or watching the video for the first time i'll explain just a little of how my guides work so this is not a beginner's guide just so you know it's a guide for those who actually main the characters and just looking for you know a bit more tips and tricks of how to use the character just some additional stuff like flow charts uh, just tricks, tips and tricks, you know what it says. It's not a beginner guy, so I won't go into detail and frames, you know, the punishes and stuff like that. So if you're looking for a beginner guide, guys, this is not it. But if you want to know some extra stuff for your character, then this is the place to be, Masku. Okay, so this is an overview of Stivu, Stivu Fuxuru. Stivu, what makes this character so good? What's his playstyle? Well, we all know by now that Steve is the counter hit god of Tekken. He capitalizes on the enemy's aggressiveness, so to speak. The more aggressive the enemy is, the more successful Steve is as a character. Like, he wants you to play aggressive. So that's what you want to look for in this character. He's got a shit load of counter hit tools, and that's really what you want to use to advantage with this character very defensive and can be very offensive with the pressure again he's he's pretty he's pretty insane guys so that's pretty much steve fox in a nutshell boys he's pretty much a counter hit beast you really want to fish for those counter hits annoy the shit out of them with the jab pressure and everything if your opponents are being too defensive like trying to be a turtle that's why the unblockable guard break stuff and the pick up bull stance come in but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. So without further ado guys, let's trade, let's go right into it. Okay, so number one, we have the creme de la creme of Steve's move list, the back one. The classic back one, we all know the back one. We all had the back one nerfed in season two because it was quote unquote too strong. <laughs> Alright, so the back one is Steve's Magic 4, so to say, but I think it's better than the Magic 4 because he has a transition to stance. So let's just start with the easiest way to use the back one. The easiest way to use the back one, of course, as a fisher. Now, I usually see a lot of intermediate Steve players just throw it randomly, like in the open, like that. No, do not use the back one like this. You don't get the most value out of it by spamming it at full screen. In fact, if you spam the bug one at full screen like this, you just, you're just encouraging the opponent to to low crush you even more and you pretty much just stay back. Now, I usually see people do this when they have uh, a life disadvantage. I mean, why do this when you don't have the life lead? You have to go in. So use the bug one as a defensive tool when the enemy is one in your face and two when he's pretty much in your range, the bug one range, which is range zero, to like range one, no, scratch range zero. That's the best time you want to use the back one. And then the third time is when you can predict, if you predict their habits and you see them like, you know, trying to come in. Uh, let's say you have a bob, a bob is coming in with a forward forward two. So try to make the hard read. I know it's, it's it doesn't seem unrealistic, but it actually is. If you guys have watched me, and you can see his success rate with the back one, it's really insane. He doesn't just spam it at full screen like randomly like that. No. He times the back one, depending on the, 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 the attack the opponent is trying to pull off. So like I said, if you see a bob, if you think the bob is going to come in with a forward forward two, just try to wait. Just try to wait and make a hard read and go for the back one. So that's the first way you want to use the back one. In an enemy's face, one. In your, in, your, in your range, that's range zero, that's two, and three, to predict attack, like make a hard read, to counter that opponent's move, and four. That's pretty much back one in a nutshell, defensively. Recently developed, and he was telling me he has developed a new kind of in close aggressive style. Now, you know the reason why he finishes the stream there? Now, let's talk about some back one tips on the offense. So we all know back one was nerfed, like the recovery after the back one was increased. So it's not really easy to spam the follow-ups, like when you go into stance and spam that. But it's, it's pretty much the same. It wasn't that it wasn't that you know that big of a nerf. You can pretty much use the back one 
as you've always used it in the past so it's still godlike still godlike boys don't worry about that okay so first thing what you want to do of course when you always use the back one we always go into flicker so the first offensively what you want to do is one try to predict the the jab like if they throwing out a jab after the back one you want to high crush that jab so the best way to do that is one by going into uh the duck cancel the, that's forward three duck cancel you go back one duck cancel you crush the high you can either punish them with all standing one two or you go for the low and go into pick up so that's one way you want to use this offensively to predict the jab or any high move and try to crush it with the duck the duck cancel the wild man cancel that's oh, wild man i forgot about the name all right let's go that's the first way the second way is of course going into his sway this crushes highs as well you want to crush the high uh i think the shoulder is best to go for this yeah the shoulder that's the second way you really want to crush um high moves after the back one let me just record this so i show you guys all right so we have we have this that's one and um my bad we have two. what the hell is that come on we have sway left there we go all right so we turn this off in fact we do it 50 50 so that i show you guys everything all right here we go so you saw that that's a high crash that's a high crash as well so you really have to it's all about the reads boys you have to if the opponent has the habit of jabbing every after time every after the back one you can use it to high crash you can use those uh flow charts to high crash the, the jabs and everything high related so that's the first way of using back one offensively okay now let's look at the back one uh, flicker jab follow-ups now like i said the back one was nerfed so the, the recovery has been increased so meaning the follow-ups uh, they're quite they come out slower now when, when you go to back one flicker like the flicker jabs come out way slower now so you can't really spam it anymore like a, an opponent can interrupt you with anything i think 12 frames in between okay there i'm there i go talking about frames again but never mind that so it's, st it's, it's still usable like if the enemy is not jabbing anymore like if they're respecting if they're now respecting your back one on block that's the time to use a, your flicker jabs to your advantage because man oh man i tell you these jabs are godlike they gel you cannot duck this like once the first one hits you cannot duck the rest and they are very difficult to punish once you duck them the opponent gets interrupted half the time i think i need, I need to show you, that, you guys that because it's, it's pretty insane one two three four all right so see that i tried to punish in between and i got raked okay i punished there see that i tried to punish again so you get my point guys it's really it's pretty insane difficult to punish and it gels if the first hit hits you so you really want to use all these flicker stances the flicker jabs when you have a chance so obviously you have flicker one 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 two very safe zero on block ah um, never mind the frames never mind the frames sorry about that so yeah flicker one 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 two that's one way to use it you have uh back one to flicker one down one that's good as well you have flicker um, flicker one one forward one that's good so flicker down one is high then this is mid so that's a good little mix up you have there one of my favorite things to do is to go into the deep zero mix ups that's um this so you can deep zero at the second hit or the the, the first hit so the first hit um the second hit so i love going into pick into pick a bull after the deep zero you can do that as well it's pretty sick it's pretty offensive give some sick mind games the opponent really won't know like it's bro like when steve is in your face bro it's oh it's insane so you can flicker twice and go into pick a bull that's also sick you can deep zero into the law uh that's yep like that or the mid uh and flicker the flicker one flicker one to the deep zero mid is it gels like the whole thing is a string that that's a string 
so it's pretty sick as well so that's pretty much the flicker jab mix up boys on, on with the after the back one hits on block it's pretty insane you want to use that as much as you can okay so let's talk about some back one frame traps of course this being a fishing tool you want to create some setups where you can get the back one on counter hit right that's what i'm going to show you guys okay so first of all one one two of course this is is spanish is 10 frame punish so one one two into back one on hit is a, is a frame trap so one one two this this is this is a frame trap they cannot interrupt they cannot press anything they have to respect that or else it's gg they get their ass counter hit so i'm just show you guys so uh on one two back one so there you go so that's a frame trap they have to respect they have to respect that or they get count height so that's the idea of these setups i'm showing you guys so everything i'll show you from now on is a frame trap okay so all sudden one two into back one is a frame trap this is godlike use this as much as you can uh two one on hit to back one is a frame trap this is godlike as well one two three into back one on hit is a frame trap use this as well but don't get too predictable because it will start decking you um quarter circle forward two into back one is a frame trap steve's new law this is a frame trap they cannot press anything from all standing itself from laws or any high crash move anything else is the get counter hit uh pick up good down two into cancel back one is a frame trap i love doing this as well but nobody really presses buttons after this but never nevertheless it's a frame trap uh let's see have i forgotten anything else mm, down forward one into back one on hit is a frame trap too utilize it as much as you can so i think those are those are the ones i can think of off my head if i've forgotten anything else i'll put the i'll put some I'll put it in the description so hopefully I, ha I haven't so that's pretty much back one frame traps okay now looking at more on the back one on offense we have the flicker two after back one now this you pretty much want to use this if you notice that the enemy the opponent is ducking every time you do back one that's where this move comes in and believe me when I say the opponent will stop ducking immediately they start getting hit with this move and like this move is pretty much insane like season three this was a godsend buff boys it's really insane but we'll talk about that later so yeah not much to say about this move but you just really wanted to catch your opponent's uh ducking like you get the guaranteed down back two afterwards and it launches on counter hit as well like i said so not pretty much to this move so to say but in the flicker two tracks as well like it tracks both sides which is, which is pretty insane to be honest like this move knocks down launches and counter it and and tracks both sides like i don't know about that but i'm a stiff player bro i ain't gonna complain you know what i'm saying <laughs> but yeah so flicker two just for the ducks not much to say about this move okay and lastly i think lastly yeah is a power crush the flicker back two so this move is pretty insane if you get interrupted by jabs then it beats in everything else so let me just show you guys this <laughs> you see that it hits it beats jabs as well it does not get interrupted by jabs my bad i i, I made a mistake about that but it beats jabs as well so it's pretty sick guys that's what makes the back one on offense so insane and at the wall at the wall you get a free wasp plot my boys my boys get a free wasp plot so back one is not just a two a godlike two on defense it is god like as well on offense this move is pretty insane it's insane so one of the best moves in Tekken. It has to be like top five. Like it's it's pretty much insane. So that's offense, the back one on offense and defense. Boys, capitalize it. Make sure you use this move to its fullest potential. Spam the shit out of it on defense, but not on offense. Don't want to spam it on offense because you have better things to use on offense. But <laughs> so that's back one in a nutshell, boys. Back one. -o. I 
looks to the skies. Great pickup though from Hira being aware. They're giving another chance there. Hira needs to. Nice, Paradise. Oh, back one. Yeah, quite impressive button. Side step. That is like the classic setup while sending one, two into back one. Oh man, this is looking. Okay, so number two, we can now look at the second creme de la creme of Steve's move list, which is the godlike down for two. The down for two that brought the scrubs to shame in season two and got our move nerfed, boys. They had our godlike move nerfs. Okay, to be honest, it was pretty brain dead. Like, yeah, but it's still good. Like, don't get me wrong, this move again might be contender for top five. Hell, it is top three in the game, period. It's a homing counter hit launcher. It's it's pretty insane, guys. So the back the down forward two is one of those moves you want to capitalize on 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 hit and back away on hit on, on block. Sorry, it's 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 very it's got very good frames on hit, but on block it's it's super minus and leaves you point blank to your opponent. So it's one of those moves where it's a trade off. You know, like it leaves you in de in demo man range on block. That's how risky it is to use on block, as good like as it is. See how to be really careful. All right, so let's start on defense. So the option, the best thing to do on this move on defense is to cancel and back away. Now, why is it good to cancel this move? You don't just cancel with down back and back away with back back. You want to try and cancel with the, the in the Korean back dash, which is down to back. Down to back. Can I show my inputs? Where do I show my inputs? Um, come on, come on, come on. Where? I, don't, I don't really love to show my inputs, so I, I, I hardly know where. Uh, player attack info. Is it this? The one? Nope, it's the one. Uh, Guys, help me. How do I help gauge command history? What the hell is wrong with me? So there I go. So you want to cancel the down back. That's a Korean KDB input. That's exactly what you want to do after you use the, the, the down forward two on block. Now, why is that good? You ask me. Okay, I don't know if this would be easy to explain, but there are some instances where Steve is able to block both lows and mids. Immediately the opponent attacks when you just cancel his down forward two with the Korean backdash input. It's it's very rare, but it does happen. Like I've actually seen an uh, an article was I think it was Spaghetti Rip made on this. Like it's pretty it's pretty cheap. He is able to block both lows and mids immediately. You cancel the down forward two into the the KDB the KDB input. I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys, but let me try. Let me try. So let's see. Um, code. Come on. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? It's supposed to be only one. Uh. Okay, I can't, so I can't. I can't be able to. I don't know how to explain it, guys. But it's a weird thing that happens in matches. I don't know if I. I, I don't know if I can sh be able to uh, to show you guys. I try to find the clip, but believe me, it's better than just cancelling to down back than holding back. You want to just back dash, because you're automatically blocking high, and in some instances, it auto also blocks low. So that's what sh that's the best option you have to do on block, because the frames ain't really bad. But if you guys are willing to get a little bit risky. Uh, on block because sometimes the enemy does hesitate to attack after you cancel this move on block So what you want to do is down forward 2 into dark forward 2 the extended dark or the the wild man dark I don't know what the move is, but <laughs> it's down forward 2 to forward 2 Usually catches the opponent off guard and you guys know this thing launches on counter hit because Steve is a counter hit god of course is a god So this catches enemies off guard on block at times this as well that's the down forward two to extended duct one now like i said these are very risky on block they are very very risky but sometimes it does work 
if you guys are willing to go the mile and take that risk. So those are the best options in my opinion to do on block. Or you can also do, you can also cancel and go to all standing one on block as well. But this is very good like on hit. So those are the best options on block in my opinion. You really want to, but you really want to just back away at high level. It's really good to back away in defense because it leaves you quite in a bad situation. Yeah. All right, now down forward two on hit is where this move shines. Like, bro, this move is like brrr. on hit, bro. Oh, it's amazing. It's got so many follow ups that are just perfect for Steve. That's a situation you want to be in with Steve when you use this move and throw out this move. If it does not count a hit, at least let it hit. Because that's when this move is really, really, really strong. So without further ado, let me just let me just go straight to it, man. So some of the best options you have out of uh, down forward two to flicker uh, to the duck, to so the duck cancer to old man. The first and obvious one that you guys probably know of is this uh, down forward two to extend the duck one. This can be interrupted, of course. You must. The opponent has to respect this, or they're gonna get their ass counter hit. Like they have to respect it. So this cannot be interrupted. Then you have um, down forward two cancel to outstanding one. This cannot be interrupted as well. But in my opinion, the 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 the, the preferable one if you cancel the duck, the the duck the, the extended duck is outstanding two. Sorry, I fucked up. Outstanding. What the hell? There. This cannot be interrupted as well. If they press anything, they get counter hit. So you see Steve has really sick options out of down forward 2 on hit, it's insane. If they start respecting, that's an opportunity you have to go low, like that. It also sets up your unblockable stuff as well, if they're respecting. I've seen people do crazy stuff like uh, the council into the, the storm, because it leaves you that close. Like, you really want to have down forward 2 on hit, man, it's really, really amazing. You get like serious pressure, you're in the face, so it's just mix up city. They have to either guess, respect you, they can't think of side stepping because the frames are just too seriously good. Let me just show you guys all these all these situations of wood. So sorry, um Okay, so first down forward two to one. That's one. Uh down forward two cancel, that's thirty two, that's two. What else? I think he has uh, down for two. I think this as well is guaranteed if, if cannot be interrupted. Sorry. So let me just record that as well. Ah, fucked up again. Um, uh, uh, okay. So fiddy, fiddy, fiddy. All right. All right. Show me what you get, get Steve. Uh, it's such a low, of course. So there, the mid. Just a jab as well, they, you can, they cannot interrupt, counter hit. There you go, so it's really it's really good guys, I can't stress enough. It's like your go to pass when Steve gets this on hit, you really want to capitalize off of this. That's what you really really want with this down forward too, if it's not counter hit of course, because counter hit you get the combo, the, the new hard stuff, you know. So that's pretty much down forward too. All the offense related to down for two. I can't think of anything else. I hope I'm really not missing anything for you guys because this move is your go to with Steve. If you're not back warning, you're down for two. That's just that's how it works. One of the two has to work in a, each match you have. This is the way it goes with Steve. If this is not working, this will work. But this on hit is what you really want. On block, you have to really be defensive. As I said, just back away. It's a safe option. Okay, so number three we have his down one, which is Steve's go to low. This is a cream de la cream of Steve's lows. I need to, I need to stop using that. I've used it enough, eh? <laughs> I know, but on the real, this is like Steve's go to low. Outside of this, you don't really have much except for like down two, and the rest of the stuff are in stance. But we'll get to that later. So down one is what you really want to go for. We all know Steve is not very risky, so you have no reason to not throw this out unless like your character has a really really good punish, uh, outstanding punish like low or 
Kazumi, Austin and Hofo, the, the Mishimas. But there's no reason why you don't want to throw this out. It high crashes, it does 14 damage, and it leaves you in crouch. That's a very good situation you want. So like I said, there's not much to say talk about this move, but I can just give you some good tips around it. It's a good tricks to use. Alright, so first things first, down 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 one to all standing one is what is what you really want to start with. Uh is what you really want to test. Because this this can only be interrupted by jabs. So let me show you. I think I already have this recorded. No, I don't. Yeah. So one, you can be beaten by jabs. And two, you can be stepped left. There yeah, can be stepped left. Ah. It's not easy, but it can be done. Like Azumi will step you clean. Yeah. So those are the mind games that come with down one. Like it can be stepped. This can be stepped. So what you want to do to beat that is down one to full crouch down forward one. That's a mix-up game with Steve. That's another option you have. So this will crush highs. Let me just show you guys. See, crushes highs. And it also can't be stepped. There, crushes right. There you go. So you see why, why this move is so strong? Despite being like one of those little pokes, it's a mind game. Just between this and this sequence, they're all mind games. Another option you can do after this is down one to step and realign yourself with the opponent when he's stepping as well. So you can do down one step, down one. I love to do that. You can do down one step to down two one. I love doing that as well. Down one step to down forward two. Those are all good options. Down one step back one. It's just good with Steve. You just flow with it. Uh, and something I also forgot to mention is that down one to outstanding one you can also be beaten by dick jab. Uh, let's see. Ah, sorry. I'm supposed to do a dick jab there. Yeah, so down one to stand in one, loses the dig jab. So that's another reason why you want to step after down one. It's a good way to really counter the, the dig jab. So, oh, come on. Nandi my There you go. So yeah, that's why you go. Uh, the side step, that's why the side step is good as well. You can also beat the dig jab. So down one to, to, to Steve Jabs is also another option I forgot to mention. This is awesome. It also beats a lot of... It catches opponents stepping, like trying to recover from side stepping or trying to press anything after the side step. So that's why you want to use this as well. So that's really down one. There's not much to this law, so let's move right on. He's in trouble here. Time winding down. He doesn't really have a good option to make a comeback here. Can he find a way or is Chicken going to run away with game two? Okay, so number four, let's look at Steve's next go to law, which is down 2-1. So down 2-1, I really, I really wanted to skip this, but it's very important because we all know Steve has cheek lows, but it's a very good range and it's pretty much a safe law. can only be beaten by low parries because of the mid extension. So the good thing about this move is that it's, got, it's, a, it's a string at first, so you've got down 2-1, two, 2. So which is mid, low, mid, high. So I have a little mix up to go with this law. This opens up a lot of possibilities because we all know you can cancel after the after the one, right? So you can go cancel and just back away. That's what makes this good, this law safe. So it can only be beaten by low parries. You cannot punish this move because of the mid extension. Just to repeat myself. So with this move, it's one of those moves that leaves you in a bad situation, just like down for a two on block because this move leaves you in point blank range as well on block so you are in demo man range you are in knock this hell sweep range you are point blank which is never you don't want to be there like it's so that's why you often see pro stiff players just throw out the down two and not the down two one that's why they never throw out the down two one so you really have to be cautious don't get too aggressive after this like test the opponent see what he does after you cancel that's how you really want to throw out this law. If you see that being really defensive or really being offensive uh, when you throw out the down 2-1, you want to go for the full extension. It's a risk, but you have to let them know that, bro, I am Steve and I will counter hit the shit out of you if you don't respect my shit. So that's what you want to do. Test them with this if they're so aggressive. If they start respecting you, that's what you want. That's what you want with this law. 
So you can go down to one, you cancel, you go into crash, and of course you go low with the pick up in into pick up boot. That's really what you wanna do. Just like down forward two. Pretty much just like down forward two guys. I don't really know how I can explain this differently, but it's what you really want to do with the down forward two extensions on block or on hit. So you have down two to forward one, down two to forward two, down four cancel or standing two. Down two one cancel or standing one. Down two one cancel full crouch down forward one. Down two one into any blockable. So that's pretty much what you have to do. But keep in mind this is on block and it's a risk. So it's all about the matchups, guys. Make sure you you're reading your opponent and see what he's doing after you you use this slow a lot. So that's pretty much down forward down two one. Pretty much the same as down forward two, except on this happens almost every time on block. Gonna be chipping away at each other, and that's Chick Chickman style right here on it. Need to play similarly though, right? A lot of down twos from Steve, down forward one. All right, number five. Let's look at Steve's jabs. Actually, I should have started with this, but back one and down four two are just too good. I had to open up with those. Okay, now Steve is one of the matchup match control gods in this game. He has one of the strongest jabs by far. This is because he has a safe string that ends in the mid. This is insane. You have no idea how insane this is. If you guys understood, understand what, what match control really is, you get to know why Steve is like super top tier. Because jabs alone, jabs alone are really insane in this game. You really want to have a character with a good jab, and Steve is one of those. who's definitely top tier when it comes to the jab game. So pretty much his jabs are used for space control. You really, if you see an opponent in your face, trying to, you know, get in your face, if you want to play it safe and not back one, because you're scared of maybe like a, a punish or like a bait or something, throw out your jabs, throw out, check him out, check him with maybe one, two, uh, one, two, three, if you feel like they'll press something, because one, two, one, two, three on counter hit, you get, you get everything, guaranteed. See, that's 33 damage on counter hit, so that's pretty insane. So the jabs as well are used to, to bait out opponents because now if they see you spamming jabs a lot, they want to go low now. So that's the opportunity you have to start baiting them to go low and start punishing them now with all standing 1-2. And this does a shitload of damage <laughs> and it really hurts. It just discourages them from going low. That's a gameplay with Steve when it comes to match control with the jabs. Abuse the shit out of them with the jabs. Make them play the game you want to play. The stiff game with patience, baiting out parries, just ugh, I I don't I don't know I, I can't stress it enough. The match control on this character is is pretty busted, so to say. It's it's really it's really messed up. The jabs are strong. So not really much to say about the jabs, considering like tips and like tricks and everything. So you can cancel the third one into flicker and extend the dark one. So that utilizes the offense. It makes makes it so that you have like insane pressure with him so what i love to do with steve is really one two three four cancel and see what they'll do first that's what you really want to do because one two three four into the cancel is a safe is safe is a safe string so check them up see what they what they, how they'll react to this if they're hesitant that's a chance to now start going for cancels so what you want to do is one two three into flicker into the jabs i explained about the flicker jabs so you have all these other extensions you can do one two three into peekaboo this is hella strong very very strong this is hella strong please use this as much as you can one two three into peekaboo uh one two three four into extended duck two this this is insane because let me just show you guys <laughs> this is so cheap this crushes highs See, it crushes highs, and believe me, this work at least twice in a match. <laughs> if the opponent is respecting your jabs a lot. But be careful, as this thing is not safe. It's like minus 14. That's, a, that's another thing you want to do if you're feeling kinky. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> if you're feeling a little bit risky, you can go for this. So those are the jabs for Steve. There's not much I can say about this. It's just a lot of pressure you can do with these strings, man. They're so strong. And just like the, the jabs in Flicker, they're also difficult to punish as well from Crouch. Uh, 
obviously. I got interrupted. I tried, tried to punish them. So what, you, what people usually do is just go low. They hate going, um, trying to punish it because they get interrupted half the time. So guys, I can't stretch it now. This has to be, if it's not the best string jab, the string based on jabs in the game, I, I don't know what is. I don't know what is, but this is another go-to for Steve. Uh, please use this as much as you can. And those are pretty much Steve's jabs. So there's not, nothing else I can say about that. He does have rage. We've seen him convert the rage drive. The back dash here from here. One, two, one. Count it. Not He's running into out. It. Ten seconds left. He's just backing out. What's happening? He just stands ah. up. Hiroshiku, so number six. Uh, is this five or six? <laughs> I think it's six. Alright, so number six, we're looking at Steve's Flicker 2, which is the gold like season. Ah, oh, like downpour 2 hurt, the downpour 2 nerf hurt like a mother, like it hurt. But the thing they showed us the Flicker 2, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> they made this a counter hit launcher? So the, the downpour 2 nerf didn't hurt as much as we thought it would be because. He can still, still come off of this and then they give him something insane again, like, come on. That's, it's pretty busted, like, this thing knocks down on normal hit and launches on counter hit. It is safe, it has insane range and pretty much tracks both sides, to be honest. It's pretty insane. So Flicker 2 is another go-to Steve move. It's a, Steve, it's, a, it's a move you just want to throw out in Flicker if you want, because it's that good. There's no reason why you don't want to use this move. So how, you, how do you use Flicker 2? Okay, first, like I said, in um, flicker stance, if you think they are ducking, you, you throw it out, of course, that's the first way. And the second way to use it is as a fissure, more like the delayed fissure. Because the good thing about flicker 2 is it's slower than down forward 2. So you can, you can have like these non frame trap frame traps. I don't know if, you, if that's understandable, but it works in a weird way. Because people are so used to setups like 1 1 2 to down forward 2. So because the flicker 2 is slower, you have these late kind of frame traps that work in a very weird way. So that's how you want to use Flicker 2 as a, as a counter hit fissure. So some setups I know are 1, down forward, one, um, off hand in 1, 2, into Flicker 2. Uh, the punish of course, after you punish, it's a good thing to throw out. So why is this good? 1, opponent cannot dig jab after this. <laughs> it, beats a, it beats a dig jab because of the little Flicker dash he does. 2, Opponent cannot step after this, and three opponent cannot back dash out of this. Let me just show you guys. So, and bam, boom. So one, I cannot dig jab, dig jab will lose. Two, I cannot side step because this move is busted. <laughs> and three, I cannot back dash. Oh, I can at some at some certain certain range if I do it slow. It does happen, but believe me, in a match, it really, it's, it, it's really, it's not really easy to backdash out of. That's one setup I love to do. Another setup I love to do is 1-1-2 one, one, into flicker, like I said, because of the down forward 2 setup. So 1-1-2 one, one, into flicker is good, flicker 2. You have 1-2-1 one, one into flicker 2, it's good as well, the same properties. And running 2 into flicker 2 is good as well. One, two, three. Oh, running two into flicker is good as well because like there's no reason why you don't want to throw this move out. It does everything. <laughs> it's one of those dumbass moves like Claudio back one, but let's not let's not talk about that right now. So yeah, uh, it's pretty insane, guys. Just throwing it out in neutral really messes the players up. Like it's ah, this move is beautiful, man. One of the reasons why I really love Steve now. <laughs> Like, I've always loved this character, but bro, when I saw this move, I was on cloud nine. So, it's a very, it's a very awesome move. Uh, just like I said, some weird setups. Not a lot of setups you can do with this, though. Just throw it out. Just throw it out and expect the best out of this move. Alright. Okay, so at number seven, we're looking at Steve's pick a boo, which is Steve's version of uh, let's just say it's a stance, but it's his version of being his aggressive side rather. He's more offensive, pressure build, and all that shit. Like if Steve wants to be in your face, bro, pick a boo is what you have to do. This is good for one breaking turtles. 
because let's face it playing steve can be an uphill battle if someone is really defensive like that shit is hard so you have two ways to really open up an opponent with steve if it's not counter hits it's gonna be pressure and poking this is heavily built around steve's peekaboo and his um uh, guard break stuff but first let's look at his peekaboo so we all know Steve has a lot of moves that like transition into his peekaboo. Uh, stuff like one full crouch down forward one um, cancels into peekaboo. So I won't really be looking at the moves that transition him to peekaboo, but more the offense uh, around peekaboo. So what you really want to do with peekaboo is if you get in, my favorite way to get in with peekaboo is of course the cancel out. So what people love doing uh, on the defensive against Pikaboo, when you go for the law, they usually love to dig jab. The first thing they'll do is dig jab. So to avoid that, what I like doing is swing left, the left shoulder or the right shoulder, then going back into Pikaboo. So let me just show you guys that. This is to beat uh, lows, uh, sorry, the dig jab of course and highs. So. Okay, see, the dig jab will lose to that. It's always a go-to because they don't, they don't want to challenge Steve in Pikaboo with jabs because Steve has a jab counter with the, the two. Like that, so. That, that counters jabs. So people don't really want to press uh, buttons in Pikaboo against Steve, so they always try to go for the dig jab. The best options they have is really sidestep and dig jab. That's usually the best thing they do. So that's why you usually use the the, the pickup against them. Oh, I went, on, I went on a cord. So you can go for the law. You beat the dig jab again. You go mid. This is not safe though, but they they rarely punish because it has an extension and it has a high as well. So what I like to do is usually go check for the for the for the for the dig jab. Because this thing is even it's difficult to whiff punish, like the recovery is so quick. So they rarely try to whiff punish. So you always have to check them and see what they do after you do the law first. So check them. If they dig jab, you're back in pressure again. Go low, just abuse the shit out of them, dude. You threaten with counter hits because this, this is plus. You can just spam it twice and they can't do anything about it. Let me just show you guys. So it beats a 10 frame. I tried to jab there, so it beats a 10 frame jab. This move is strong. It is one of Steve's best moves also. So it, it beats jabs, and anything below a jab will be counter hit, except from a lock, since it's a high. So if you throw out any other mid, it's going to be counter hit. So you see why Steve's pickaboo is very, very OP. I just abuse them. If they're out of range, you use a duck cancel to get back in range, like that. That's how you usually use the, the pickaboo pressure. Another way you can try to beat the, the, the dick jabs, of course, is the, the, the up forward two. But this is now launch punishable in Tekken 7. Very risky. So I don't really recommend this. But if you're, feeling, if you're feeling frisky, go for it. Go for it. But if you want to stay safe, you can always use the up forward one. This move is really underrated, but it's a very good high crash, very fast, very good frames. And it puts you in a down back. 3-2 range on hit, so it's really godlike. Another way to beat the dick jab is the forward two. This thing is also ish, it's also hella good. It beats dick jabs and highs as well. So let me just show you guys. So see? It crushes it crushes the dick jab bro. I don't know why and how, but it does. <laughs> Look at that. So you really want to use this as well. Beats jabs as well. So does it I don't think it crushes lows. Trades at the lows. So yeah, there there are the options you have for beating highs and the dick jab. Sway left. Sure you can. Up forward one. And pick up a forward two. And pick up a forward two has a follow-up of course. You can get a, a guaranteed Sonic fan. I got. So again, more on peekaboo. I've talked about the two a bit. The two is just a very spammable move. It's homing. 
So a good frame trap, of course, is down down one to two. This is a frame trap. We have to respect this. Hence, that's why they like going for the dig jab and for the for, and for lows because they're they're afraid of the counter hit. And of course, so the down forward one one extensions, good mix ups. Of course, it has a mid very uh, high variation and the mid bid string, which is good. I have again for like you know just irritating the shit out of your opponent um let's see i forgot anything else the bucks way wall bounce this is good at the wall this is this is another underrated move but again the best way to use this is after down one down one to the bucks way wall bounce they love interrupting down one it's just so abusive so so cancerous man so they really love, love pressing buttons afterwards so this is a good way to just you know make him stop like, shut up or bounce you get the big ass damage to gg that's really peekaboo you just really want to try your best to always going to peekaboo guys i can't stress this enough if you especially if you don't have the life lead like if you if you're trying to catch up peekaboo is what you really want to be in. so just many versions of going to peekaboo uh, all of these you just want to be in peekaboo as much as you can okay so lastly on peekaboo we have the peekaboo jabs now the jabs the jabs got a buff in season three the last hit now launches on counter hit so it is way way more scary now to use the shit out of those those jabs and you have to use them so the good thing about these jabs you can even delay the third hit now which is very very scary so like I said, this is like Steve's really oppressive, oppressive stance, so to say, or his oppressive gameplay, he's a peekaboo. So the peekaboo jabs, you have the jabs, you go low, you go mid, just abuse them. So actually another frame trap is uh, one, two, two, two. This is a frame trap as well. So get counter hit if they do press anything. Yeah, it's one, two, boom. So it beats a jab because it's a jab counter as well. Anything below 10 frames would be a counter hit. So that's why it is OP as hell. Let's really watch the jabs on, on Steve's Pickaboo. So you want to do this, especially when they also get out of range, like a good Zafina or a good Alisa can backdash out of your stance. So a good way is to, to bring yourself back to that zero range. The point blank range is of course with the jabs and the wild man cancel. So I love doing the wild man cancel. Uh, get back in range, poke them low, or mid for the mix up. Those are pretty much Steve's peekaboo jabs. So that's pretty much peekaboo, they go to offense with Steve. And I think that's pretty much it. I looks to the skies. Great pickup though from Hira being aware. They're giving another chance there. Hira needs to take the momentum now. Take the gift that low high gave him. Okay, so number eight now. Let's look at Steve's um Steve's guard break. Now, this is a very important aspect of Steve's gameplay. This differentiates a good Steve player from a great Steve player. Cause a good Steve player will just use back one and down forward two. It just be Steve. Even when, the, even when the opponent is a turtle. But a great stiff player will add the guard break to his gameplay if he notices that the opponent is being a turtle. Because this will make your opponent start being more aggressive. He will hate the fact that you, you, you know you have the guard break and bro, it is hella scary when Steve's in your face. Like you're afraid of getting counter hit, but then he pulls out this shit. Then you're like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> So, the guard break can be used in so many situations. It can be used off of Oki. You can use it raw. It has a very strong mix up to it. But you put, you put yourself at quite a risk. But to be honest, the risk is very small. Because people kind of pa panic to punish it. Okay, so, of course, the, the guard break is a high. Uh, forward 3, forward 2. That's a high. Then. There's a mix up with the mid variation. So the mid does nerf, it just gives a knockdown now. So you can follow up, but you can always juggle with the the, the hard the hard combo. Ish, this combo is not very easy, but I'm sure you guys know the, the combo I speak of. 
You want some easy stuff to do. Anyway, so yeah, that's the mix-ups between the guard break high and the mid extension. And if you're feeling a little frisky, of course, you can go with extended launch, which is minus 14, of course. So aggressive player will use this when an opponent is being too defensive, is being a turtle, you just can't break his defense, so you need to start throwing that out. So what people do to usually defend against this is one, they usually, they usually, they usually magic for just when Steve's about to, to pull out the, the, the unblockable. Like I've seen um, Taki, Taki throw out magic four with Kazumi. Just when Steve's about to pull out the punch, you pull out something to count uh, to hit you on the counter hit. So what you do to do this, to counter this is, and usually like magic fours are highs, so you, really, you, you, you usually just duck the high and punish it. So what you usually do to that is, one, you can go for the high, I mean for the mid extension, which crushes highs. This will go under any high, it will go under any magic four, it will go under any jabs. But it's very risky because it's minus 14. It's unsafe, so to say. So what I like usually doing is just duck cancel. Cancel in their face. If they throw out the magic four, you punish them. That's the best thing you have to do, to be honest, at high level. The university is at intermediate level, but at high level, a good stiff player will do this. I've seen Bohi do this like a million times. Beat out the magic four and punish. That's what you really want to do to counter their counter, so to say. So now, in what situations do you want to use this extended duck guard break? So like I said, you can use off of Oki. I think I'll just make up a little video at the end showing some of these uh, guard break setups. But you can always use it in the offense, one, two, three, four, you go into duck cancel, you do this. Down forward one, like I showed you. Uh, down two, one. Just so many situations. This, this is very strong. Steve has a lot of variations from down forward one, like we all know. So it's really good to just cancel it and go into the unblockable. So that's pretty much the best way I can explain the guard break. And the most important thing about this guys is please just use it against opponents that don't want to push you because they're afraid of counter hits. It's your chance to really go in with unblockable and test them and see if they really can defend against it. If they can't, they're gonna have a hard ass time. Jesus, this combo. Yeah. So, I hope I haven't forgotten anything really crucial about the guard break. But if I will, I'll put it at the end of the video. Okay, so now I'm going to make something a little bit different. I want to talk about getting in with Steve. Because I've noticed intermediate, like the ranks, yellow, you know, some other intermediate ranks. I think people have a lot of difficulties getting in with Steve. They usually use the risky stuff like uh, uh, Albatross down to Albatross 2, uh, forward 2 1, forward 2 1, not forward 2, yeah, forward 2 1, and running 2. Running 2, uh, sometimes they risk forward forward 2. Uh, so th those are really good options, but they're not terrible, don't get me wrong, they're not terrible, but they're a little bit risky, especially at high level. Because stuff like this can get sidestepped, this will get blocked. Running to get stepped, this will get stepped, this will get ducked. So there are a lot of, a lot of a little bit more safer ways to get in with Steve. That's what I want to talk about. So let's start with the wild man. This is by far one of Steve's best ways to get in. Let's talk about the busted down for two. Uh, not Steve's down forward 2, but the generic launcher, the down forward 2, the, the Shaheen, the Paul, the Law. Those, those moves are really OP to the fact that they, don't, they have very little recovery on whiff, and they catch you dashing. They catch you dashing in half the time. So good players really spam this when they think you're about to dash in their face. So that's where Steve Fox shines, because those launchers only launch you when standing. They can't launch you when you're crouching. So that's where the wild man comes in, this wild man duck. He won't, the down forward 2 can't launch Steve while he's in this, this, this council because he's technically in a crouching status. So that's why Steve shines when it comes to getting in against those characters. So that's one reason why you want to get in with the wild man. Two, the wild man, like I said, can be extended into the unblockable. 
end the, 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 the normal version has extensions as well like that so the opponent is usually afraid to press buttons because they think you might throw out the one or the two or go into the extended unblockable so that's why you want to cancel and go into peekaboo the peekaboo law oh, I love doing this this is very strong this is one of the most safe ways to get in with Steve and like I said previously in the peekaboo the peekaboo um, the peekaboo section of this tutorial is they mix up with the mid of course you forward three cancel mid forward three cancel low that's a good mix up you can do when getting in the forward they're all standing to also crushes highs so this is one way to get in with Steve probably the best way the second best way to get in with Steve in my opinion is with the rocket launcher this covers a really good range uh, somewhere here range one range two uh, I think range one now this move was busted prior to season 3 because it had little, very little recovery on wave god this move was busted as shit <laughs> Oof, I actually thought I was all I really noticed but this move was really busted but now it was like Leroy back 1 plus 2 but now it's been nerfed but it's really it's just really the same you can really use it even on wave because the recovery is not that much this is another way to get in with steel just control the space uh, very difficult to sidestep it's got very good tracking decent tracking so to say the second way the third way is a pickup cancel from albatross so this is what this is why i said this is not really a bad way to get in but this gets stepped but if you notice that stepping you always cancel and be in pickup because you're on the you're still on the offensive if you sidestep you realign yourself very strong this is very strong so it's just a little section I wanted to do with getting in on Steam. It's really, it's really sad to see players just do the risky stuff all the time. This gets blocked. So away from the other um, regular stuff like dashing down forward too. This is already good. Like it covers a lot of range. It beats side stepping. So it's it's not a bad way to get in. But against characters down forward too, and a good jab pressure game like Azumi or Jack, you have to be really careful to do this. Dash it back one is good, of course. Ranged uh, Albatross 2 is good. So it's that's really something I wanted to, to put out there because it's been on my mind, but I hope it really helps someone out there getting in with Steve. It's really, it's really good. Okay, so finally at number 10, we're looking at Steve's best move. is Rage Drive. There's a lot to talk about the rage drive, so I won't really get deep into it. I'll just give the best tips on this 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 godlike rage drive, the best rage drive in the game by far free. Okay, so Steve players really love to just throw this out raw. But I I, I really hope, I really wish Steve players would be more patient. If you guys have watched me in tournament a lot, he's really patient when he has rage. Like he knows that people always block and try to be patient and wait for you to you to spend your rage drive because they know how scary this shit is, bro. This shit will catch you and you just flinch and you just try to sidestep. So what need does it takes really good advantage of this. You start poking you, chipping you just a little bit, you know, making you frustrated. Makes you want to press buttons. So when you press that button, boom, he hits you with this. And while he's doing that, he's also he's also looking for a punish as well, because this is a 14 frame rage drive. So to punish anything, minus 14. And the second way to do this, which is a Hera. If you guys have watched Hera a lot, Hera always goes for the extensions, he prefers the extensions. And this is what I wish Steve players would do more, guys. Please don't just spare immediately you have rage, you use it. No. It's the same thing with Kazuya. When Kazuya's have rage, the first thing they do is boom, the rage drive. There's so much you can do with these rage drives, guys. And I just wish Steve would be more patient. So when you have rage, it's a good time to start going for the unblockable. Because Steve has conversions from his little knockdowns. You know the little knockdowns? Why he gets the, the, the animations with the little legs up? He has he has extensions with the rage drive. Uh, let's see. Oh, my, my, controller, my controls are all messed up. Uh, he's playing a lot of Murdoch, so I had to change this up. So Yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, he has got little, he has got conversions from these little knockdowns. He does. Jesus, what the hell? There we go. So try to fish for these guys when you have rage. 
it's got so many no mix up mix up like this with the mid high, the high mid does the knockdown as well i think this was actually given to him this is on this is on too so all these knockdown just try to fish for these guys in rage before you just go directly for the rage drive it takes a little practice but it's very doable it's not easy but it's doable you know still one of those characters you really have to dedicate your time playing yep here we go yeah so that's pretty much the only point i wanted to to, to pull out with the rage drive i know it's very tempting to just throw it out every time you get the rage but please fishing is more is more rewarding like you think if, if you do this to them once in a match they'll be afraid to duck the next time that's your chance to now go for the unblockables now the guard breaks you know put them in the mix up put that in their head that you can do this you can mix them up you know launch them with the rage drive or guard break them and make them start pressing buttons that's how you really want to use this rage drive but all in all, it's got so many, it's very versatile. I don't blame you for just throwing it out, you know, or waiting for a punish. Like, that's why it's, it's the best rage drive in the game, because it's so versatile. It can be used very in different ways. But my favorite way to use this is always try to, to fish for the knockdown. It just gives more damage and puts you in a great situation with, like, Oki and everything. Like I said, not easy to do. But once you get the hang of it, bro, you get the hang of it. I haven't played Steve in quite a while, so... Uh, it's quite a sad sight to see. So, that's pretty much Steve's Rage Drive. I think this is the last tip I'll do. The, the tips that follow up next are little video clips on stuff like the unblockable setup and all the Rage Drive conversions I've talked about. I know there is so much more with this character I haven't touched on. But that's because he's so wild and I didn't want to make this tip, these tip videos very long. They usually go for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, but I'm sure this will be an hour by the time I edit it. So yeah, I really hope you caught at least one or two things guys, so please enjoy the rest of the video. Shoot, shoot, shoot. 